All right, fan of Whiskey Words and Wisecracks, here we are. It's Kyle and Chris out in the uh, the steel building out here, the uh, old pole barn, where it is a balmy 11 degrees out. Um, we're going to try a new segment here for the first time. It's going to try Chris tries blank for the first time. Chris tries blank for the first time. So how do you feel about that, Chris? I feel... Terrific about it. Terrific I, about it. Is it only going to be whiskey? Chris tries... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going there, Chris. Uh, and yes, it is going to be Chris, whiskey. It's kind of oh. the, the theme of whiskey, words, and wisecracks. Which the other theme is like, comment, and subscribe to whiskey, words, and wisecracks. Okay. Ding! Yes, it is going to be a whiskey, and it's going to be something you haven't tried before. Maybe a mixed drink we'll go to that you haven't tried before. And uh, today, we have something from, I know, your fav one of your favorite whiskeys so far. Has been Glenmore and G the original, so we're gonna ramp you up a notch. We're gonna try Glenmore and G Quinta Ruben, as I'm choosing to pronounce it, and all our uh, subscribers out there can correct me on that. We do welcome your comments on that. This is a 14 year old port cask finished Scotch. This starts its life out in bourbon barrels, and uh, it goes into port cask for finishing. So it's a double your first, probably your first double cask whiskey i believe at least that i've given you that i've given yeah. you a try so um again comes in at 14 years old as we mentioned and it comes in at 46 percent abv or 92 proof um and i have quite a quote on this from their website i think you need to hear this you're about to be more excited about trying this chris uh, <clears throat> quinta ruban is a whiskey journey into the wild into the wild dark and delible delectable forest where the wind whistles with guts of peppermint and dark squirrels of chocolate can happen at any time. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. At any time. I know, Just sneak Chris. Up on you. I, All right. I know. So, uh, that said, we're going to pour a little bit for you in our uh, wine glasses because we keep it classy here on uh, Whiskey Words and Wise Tracks, as you all know. Let's hear the cork pop. Not bad. Not bad. I will pour you some of this for your tasting journey here. There you go. We'll just try a little bit because we're shooting a couple videos today. We don't want to get inebriated at 11 in the morning. I'm going to pour myself a little bit too because whiskey. So there we go. I'm going to put the bottle front and center there. And we'll cap it back up. And uh, we'll get our nosing going on it here. All right. All right. Here we go. So we're going to get ready to nose this rascal up here now. Uh, would you have a question about the barrels you said, Chris? What? Yeah, what kind of barrel is uh It is in. Uh, let us look it on the bottle. Let's look on the bottle. That's probably the best thing here. Let's see here. Bourbon cast and finished in port wine casks. They look a little a little chubbier than the bourbon barrels there. Yes, they do. Yeah, port wine casks. Um, the Basil Hayden's is one of my favorites. It was also in uh, port wine, right? It is, and that is one of your favorites as well, which kind of led me to... That's one of you and one of my wife's favorites, which kind of led me to get this, because uh, it's right at both of your wheelhouses, so yeah. to speak. So. I'm, I'm excited to try it. It would be good. If anything so. close to uh, the Basil Hayden's. As we're nosing it up here, we're, we're going to do a new rating system. We're going to give a 1 through 10 score on the nose. At least Chris is, because this is his segment of Chris tries blank for the first time. So I get that dark chocolate. You get the dark on. chocolate? I would, I would agree with that. I'm just going to nose it along with him, because I'm a supportive co-host. You know, I'm a supportive co-host that's going to give him my input. What else you get in there, Chris? And it, I'm going to be honest with you all, our, our viewer right now. It's a little difficult out here in 11 degree weather with a high ceiling. So we really got to get our nose into these wine glasses because I saved the Glen Cairns for another segment. So we really got to get our nose in there and put our concentration in this. This is why he looks so focused and kind of well, strange I, right now. <laughs> well, I always look a little strange. Right, right. That's, that's a little dark. I get dark fruit in there, but it's almost like a like a blueberry-ish. I'm raspberry. You're raspberry? I'm raspberry on that, yeah. And I get the same dark fruit as you, so I think we're along the same path here. Let's see what it says here. Let's see, peppermint and dark swirls of chocolate can happen at any time. I don't get any peppermint. I'm not really getting a lot of mint on this one either. I do pull mint out of whiskeys pretty well normally. Um, I also get like a ginger candy on this. I don't know if you ever had the ginger hard candy. It's uh, not my favorite, but I, I do get that on the nose here. So. I don't think I've ever had ginger candy. Maybe I'll have to try that. And what do you think? And if you had to score this right now, take a couple more snips, what would you say on a 1 to 10 on this? I would say this is about an 8. An 8? Wow. He likes yeah, the nose I on this. I do like throat. the nose on it. It's, it's wow. sweet. It's nice and sweet. 
I was in the six neighborhood. He's liking the sweetness. Are you ready to give it a taste here, Chris? It's not overwhelming. Yeah, I'm ready to dive right it, in it's, here. It's definitely not overwhelming. If that has to do with our conditions, I don't know. But I'm still, I feel like we're getting a pretty fair nose out here mm. in the 11-degree uh, uh, barn here. So. Yeah, let me give it a little... Uh, here he goes, folks. Time for the taste. Drum roll. Whiskey community awaits, Chris. The whiskey community awaits. No pressure. I get that sweetness right off, right on the tip of the tongue there. Sweetness, right, sweetness on the tip. right on the tip of the tongue. Which is where the sweetness receptors are, so that's a, that's a astute observation there, for sure. I get that dark chocolate, but it's not like... It's not like a super dark chocolate, but it's definitely not milk chocolate. I think we got a little, a little bit of smokiness in here, a little bit. Definitely, I'm still on ginger candy. I'm still on dark fruit. Um, I'm definitely leaning a little more raspberry, maybe a little. Uh, what's the one? Current black currant, maybe a currant, if you prefer. I don't know why I'm rolling my R's today, folks. That's, uh, I'm gonna give it another. I could, I could pick out a little. I could see where you're getting the raspberry there mm -hmm. because. Um, I kind of get your blueberry. It's, it's just a dark fruit it's overall. A, it's, a, it's a nice little sweetness there. Yeah, isn't it? absolutely, absolutely. I'm going in for another taste. All right. Definitely that you get, for me, I uh, get that sweetness on the tongue, and then mm -hmm. uh, I get that dark chocolate kind of towards the uh, finish there. I find that the finish is kind of like the, uh, it's kind of consistent. From the nose all the way down through the finish, it's pretty consistent. There's it's consistent. Nothing, I don't think there's anything unique that pops out, or it's just, it's smooth and it's consistent, I think. What do you, what, what do you okay, we got a rating for the uh, palate here. What do you got for the palate? Uh, I'll give that maybe a seven. Seven for the palate, okay. And how about the finish? Now, I'm going to go in and focus more on the finish with a little sip there. Finish is very smooth. I think, uh... It is. It's not spiky at all. It's just kind of an extension, I think, mm. of everything else. You get a, I get a lot of a little spice in there, too, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. little sip, you know, the spices. And where do you get your bourbon is with the uh, it's with your corn, with your yeah. either rye or wheat and malted barley or barley, depending on which kind they use. This is 100% malted barley in here. Barley? As the, as the grain. So this is all malted barley right here. So it definitely contributes to a smooth flavor, and it's... Uh, to me, it doesn't quite have the spice of a bourbon, of a lot of bourbons, but it's a nice, uh, from the port wine barrels, I'm guessing, it's kind of a nice a nice finish, nice kind of warming finish on it. I think the finish is like a nine. I, I, I'm really, uh, he's digging I really, the, I dig the, dig he's the digging finish. He's smooth finish, absolutely. He's yeah. digging the smooth finish. So, Chris, Goes my goodness, nice. uh, overall, what are you thinking now? What is your overall score on this, and where is it going to rank in the, the Pantheon of Harris whiskeys he's tried? <laughs> Big word. Be good for those once in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Overall, I think uh, probably eight, eight and a half. Wow, that is yeah, a score. Yeah, it's very good. We're going to round your two and go 8.25. Now, where would you put it with your port wine finished Basil Hayden's, which has up till now been your favorite whiskey? Would you rank it a little ahead, a little behind? It's a lot of pressure right now. What do you think? Well, it's been a while since I had the Basil Hayden's, but... Um, I think Basil Hayden's have probably edged it out just a little bit, but it's really close. Edged it out a little bit, but pretty close. That's good. So we yeah, found a good really whiskey. Good. Oh, yeah. To try here. Excellent. Well, we got, we'll keep in mind in this segment, as Chris tries blank, because we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to get him into some high-proof stuff eventually. You know it's going to be fun to watch him try Ardbeg for the first time. So keep tuned to this segment, because we're going to give Chris some very creative and fun whiskeys to try. We're going to get some mixed drinks going for him, I think. And, uh... I'm not afraid to give a Tabasco and whiskey and see what he does, because it's, it's, it's Chris. We're, we're on his whiskey journey with him, and we're going to have some fun experimenting. So, Chris, do you have anything to add to our first uh, Chris, uh, Chris tries blank for the first time? This is fun. This and is fun. I can't wait till the next time. Uh, All right. We've got much more content coming for you. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think. Whiskey Words and Wisecracks. Out. Out. We'll see you next time.